Yeah, Hope Summers is looking like a really strong season pass card so far. Ton of people reporting success with this one on day one of the new season. Some great early data rolling in. I had a fantastic run with Hope Summers in this deck, which is kind of a Shuri and Kitty build because both of these are great enablers for Hope Summers. Of course, Kitty Pride, you can just play turn after turn. She basically makes herself free when you're playing her into that Hope Summers location. You don't have to worry about filling it up. You can also scale up something like an Angela if it's in there as well. And then that kitty can actually feed into a Shuri. If you make your kitty big with Hulk Buster or Forge, you can double it up with Shuri and play it with a Taskmaster on the final turn for some great results. Alternatively, just Shuri into your Hope Summers creates a really cool line because that's a three and a four that allows you to follow up with a six because of that energy ramp from Hope. So instead of having to rely on a vision, which can be a little too small, or like a Red Skull, uh, which traditional Shuri decks had played, which can be kind of risky if you haven't played that Sauron. Magneto is a fantastic play uh, because not only does he get really big jumping up to 24 power, but he can be really disruptive thanks to his move, sometimes locking out opponents or forcing them to commit power in a location where you're just dominant because Magneto is so big, which can often feel like they're wasting power. And then of course you still got a big Taskmaster follow up and you can even play like two drops or various one drops as well, because uh, you're, you're gonna have seven energy on that final turn if you play that Magneto in the Hope Summer spot. So ultimately, uh, this deck just has a lot of sneaky, cool little lines and different kinds of ways to win. You know, like stuff like, um, you know, Hope Summers and, and play a Nightcrawler on it on turn four. You can actually play Orca on turn five and Taskmaster on turn six. Surprisingly good play to have a 16 power Orca and a 16 power Taskmaster. Keep in mind, that's the same as like doubling a vision normally in a, in a Shuri deck at that 16 power level. So that can do surprising stuff. And I had a fantastic 25 and 10 run with this deck. As always, of course, there are bot games in the mix on uh, day one of the ladder, but won plenty of non-bot games as you're gonna see. Um, this deck was still just putting out some crazy wins and some big numbers and it's probably not even perfect right this is a day one build so we'll see some refinement and some advancements we'll keep an eye on hope but uh she seems like a card that's going to be enabling some pretty cool decks and uh will we'll definitely be a big piece of the meta moving forward it looks like so far some some really promising results up to this point so enjoy some crazy big games crazy big numbers all thanks to hope summers okay kitty early is amazing yeah kitty hope is cool Kitty Pride. I haven't had a good kitty game in a while, so we could a Hulk bust or something would make me over the moon, man. Over the moon, man. Shuri has definitely felt like like Shuri Hope has certainly felt like the more key win condition in this deck. Through these like first 20 games or whatever. I don't know how many I played, but has definitely felt like the the more key win condition. I'll say that for sure. But this kitty backup plan has still felt compelling. It has still felt pretty good, so. Oh, magic is even more time to do my stuff. I, I think I can probably do bigger, nastier stuff with more time than the opponent, but I need a Shuri for it, really. Without the Shuri, I don't know that it would be nasty enough, basically. Um, you need that Shuri to make the big, big numbers. Oh, hey, speak of the devil, okay. Yeah, I mean, Shuri, Kitty Pride on six is a possibility. Um... So maybe we could go like vision kitty pride next turn. It's weird because Shuri, the kitty pride as big as it is, like it's still not as big as an Orca or a Magneto right now. You know what I mean? So it's more about like, do you value the surprise factor or what? Cause like this is gonna be nine basically. I could just go like Shuri right now. I do this right now. And then next turn I can play Orca for 22 and then Taskmaster basically later. Um, actually, I can even make this Shuri slightly bigger as well if I want. This Invisible Woman is very nerve wracking. Can I break that at all with like a Magneto or something? I mean, I think this is just better, right? It still makes the Kitty an interesting threat later. Like the Kitty's still pretty cool later. It just, it gives me the Magneto or the Orca in a much better way. 
if I got a Magneto here, would I actually play it here? No, because it doesn't pull anything. It would be cool to lock up their Invisible Woman potentially, but it just doesn't do anything right now. Yeah, so I guess we go Orca. I think we wait, right, because we want a Taskmaster. And then next turn is a 22 power Taskmaster plus a Kitty Bride. Plus, actually, I can maybe play a, a two drop, but we're gonna have eight. Yeah, and Angela as well. Know, the opponent looks like they're cooking though, right? Something's cooking. We don't know what it is yet, but there's 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 stuff cooking. There's Modoc stuff. There might be like Artem Zola stuff too. Like this could be a Modoc, and this could be an Artem Zola. Um, in which case we would actually potentially want to win it's because like um, the Dracula could be like 16 uh, And 20 power and Morbius would also be very big and day can be very big So we would actually need like a ton of power left to beat that But we wouldn't need anything mid basically This is like it, this actually feels so wrong in some way um but I've seen this deck do things, and I think it might be an Arnim Zola deck. I don't know. Or maybe Hella too. If it's Hella, we probably want to spread our power out more, unfortunately. Um, like I'm just worried this is getting really big. Do I really want to commit a Kitty Pride, though, and nothing mid? It's just really hard to win mid, right? Like, I trust the Taskmaster a little more. So may maybe it's actually this, right? Maybe it's this. This is, like, the, the biggest kind of middle-of-the-road hedge. Um, is that really an Arnim Zola, bro? No way. I think it is, dude. I think I called it. I think it's Arnim Zola, and then you see a Modoc. Yeah, I called it. Are we big enough, though? The good news is we just win mid with Nico now, so if the Kitty Pride's big enough left, which it feels like it might be... Oh, God, I don't know, because Mobius is getting big, man. Dang, dude. If I'd put the Taskmaster left, we would have covered this 100%. I just thought Hella was a possibility. Oh, okay, that's the small APOC, so we're totally fine, right? I think we're fine. If that was the big APOC, we might have been in trouble. Yeah, it's cold, dude, scary. <laughs> Kitty was covering it up. That's a close game. I don't know, so like, it, it, it basically though, like if you call this shot, which we could, we talked about, right? It's a bold call to say Nico's gonna win mid, but it does cover your bases. I think, I think the line we took was the nice kind of middle ground that played sensible into a normal line and still, as we see, covered an Arnim Zola line as well. I don't, I can't say we knew that with confidence, but definitely um, in hindsight. So probably the right line. Scary, scary game, dude. Really fun game though. We got monster big. Nico, double this card's power. Um, that's actually pretty great with Hulk Master. Hulk Master, Hulk Buster. Hulk Master is Grand Master and Hulk Buster had a baby. Oh, okay. New layer doesn't really help, but a good card generally for us, thanks to Taskmaster stuff, right? Wait, why did I use Grandmaster as an example when Taskmaster's in the deck? Who knows, who knows? This is still giant, though. This is big, dude. Big boy here. Um, Invisible Woman. Okay, so that's making me think Tribunal stuff, which fortunately is actually kind of tough for us. Um... Ant Maze would theoretically be better. Yeah, I mean... Magneto can definitely mess with Tribunal stuff a little bit. Oh, especially with Magic in play. Yeah, this might actually work out all right. Oh, this hand's great. It's like pull... Like, I'd love for them to play another, like, three or four drop here. It'd be like Iron Lad or something that sucks. Like a bad Iron Lad, basically. Crystal's great too. Okay, so this is basically gonna lock them up mid. If they commit an Iron Man here, they're not gonna ever have that much crazy power for a tribunal because he can't do like onslaught stuff. So the Magneto here basically just intended to to really lock them up mid and and make this invisible woman hard to play toward. If they're Modoc Hella in particular, they're probably well, they may not be extra screwed because they may only need the Modoc to be honest, but. Or at least this plays for a great Taskmaster with some follow-up support later, right? It's hard to say exactly where my next cards want to go. I, I could do maybe an Orca right if I do this, but then I'm locked up left. Like, I can't I can't add, like, a Vision or anything. You think you do want to play Forge because it's, like, free power, right? I don't know. This is fine, I think. 
Let's see if we think it's Modoc Hella or if we think something else is going on, right? Even if it's Modoc Hella, I'm less worried. So see, this looks more like Iron Man tribunal stuff, right? Oh, we did hit the Orca, yeah. Our fears indeed came true, but yeah, they punished us down match, I think, cool, okay. I think the Magneto just kinda probably interrupted their plans too much because you can't play both Tribunal and Iron Man here. So how big can you get? And we're just gonna be, I actually, you know, it, uh, if I really thought this through, we'd probably play Orca right here just to stack any kind of, tri like if this is Iron Man, the Tribunal could still technically be pretty big. So we'd probably just commit to, to mid and right to beat um, a Tribunal, but you know, it's never gonna be that crazy big level because of the uh, Magneto disruption here. Hello, they say, hello, sir. Uh, I'm gonna play this Nico and hope to draw a Kitty Pride. I um, don't need to play the Nightcrawler right away, but Kitty Pride or even an Angela here would both be pretty cool follow-ups. Starlight Citadel. Um, we, we can play the Nightcrawler. I currently don't have an enabler for Hope other than Nightcrawler, but if I get Shuri, I won't want that. It's fine to do this. Without Kitty, this powered, it doesn't really matter where it goes, right? Pretty good chance we had something for hope in time. Like, you know, there's five cards out of seven, basically, that that play for the hope. So we would have to draw the two worst cards in the deck two turns in a row. Collapse mine, huh? I mean, you know I love... Dude, you know I love playing <laughs> around Collapse mine. I think we can wait, though. That's fine. Vision gives us still a good Shuri draw. Like, Shuri Vision's totally fine. Yeah, Hulkbuster's not as good, unfortunately. This is where you wish you kept the Nightcrawler, right? The the Collapse Mine definitely threw us off a little bit. If it wasn't for the Collapse Mine, we wouldn't have needed to, but you know, I, I kind of miss the ability to play into a six here, which does hurt a little. Uh, we've got an Orca line, which is pretty cool. Maybe just like move Nightcrawler over or something and play for Orca. Could also play a one off the top, so Kitty could be a slight bonus bump. Uh, Loki, I mean, they can have a pretty good turn, right? A lot of really cheap potential stuff. Like a lot of, you know, Angela spam some zeros that, you know, Shuri combos become a little easier for them. So let's see if they play like a Shuri this turn or not, because that could definitely change my fate. Um, Orca, they could also just match an Orca or play an Orca. Okay, they played four cards already. Um, there's three still in hand, so. They did get a lot of the little fodder so far. Forge there. I wonder what that's. Oh, Nexus. Whoa. So with Nexus, I think we're probably better off. Uh, is Magneto better or like they're gonna, are they gonna fill this or, you know, should I give up one power to maybe avoid like a Loki in case they can't fill it or whatever, right? Maybe, maybe I don't want to pull a Hope or a Loki in case they only have two cards to play, but I'm really worried about Shuri now too. Because Forge also stacks additional power right as well. But I don't know, I mean, I got a Vision and a Nightcrawler moving 12 power in. So, you know, we're also getting a pretty nice free little bump here on the Nexus, which is pretty cool. They are actually ahead in both other spots though, just on board. So they could actually lose Nexus and still win. Oh, two cards. It's exactly what we talked about for the Loki and the... um. Oh, well, they played a Cosmo, so it wouldn't have mattered, but I think I think still pretty heads up from us. That's cool. Yeah, look, they almost won, dude. We tied 28, even though I won by five here. This was close to only a two point lead. Jeez. Okay, Bar Sinister's insane with um, Vision. I don't think we want to use the Nightcrawler on it. You can, you know, kind of get some bonus bodies, but just from a spacing standpoint, that can definitely be a little bit risky. I know, we're gonna play this here, so where does the Shuri really come in, right? That's the question. Like, if you could play Shuri and Vision at the same time together, that would be insane. But we're not gonna be able to cheat that much energy off hope, I don't think. Um, honestly, let's just start playing some stuff. Since we missed our early game, I don't wanna just totally give up these early turns. There's an opportunity to fill our curve here a little bit. I mean, Vision's four spots, so we need to be mindful of that, right? But we have five spots remaining, so. Oh, Strange Academy is kind of annoying. Hulkbuster is good, though. It condenses the power down a bit. Yeah, let's just do the Hulkbuster here. Let's save for the, the I don't know, man, like... Shuri Vision could still be kind of good and just play a big boy on Bar Sinister like Magneto or something, but that's sort of risky. Let's see what we get here. Psylocke. Oh. 
Darkhawk. Oh. This lets me play the vision a turn early. Which I do want to do. I mean, I mean, I guess it doesn't really matter too much, but <coughs> this lets me play a Shuri and a six drop is the important thing, I think. Whoa, they're going back mid on this Darkhawk. Crazy. Holy crap. That is a big, big board mid. Um, okay. So the way this works, he's both move mid, which means I can move the Nightcrawler back out for the Shuri. And then I just need to hit one of my six drops. If I miss my six drops, we're kind of screwed, maybe. Well, wait, do I even want to hold up, though? Maybe I really want to play the Shuri here, don't I? Since I can kind of keep this occupied and then I can create copies of like all the big ones. Oh, yeah, this is way better, right? Oh, yeah, this is way better. Who am I kidding? <coughs> Oh, they played Vision 2. Holy crap. That's scary. Uh, okay, that's a lot of free power for them. Pixie. Cool. So they're fixed mid. We know exactly how much power they're going to mid, but I can't really... It doesn't matter. I can't I can't beat it. We keep it moving out the Nightcrawler. I can, oh, that's what we needed to see, though. Here we go. So now we just go full Vision right, and then we, we know Magneto... Like, never loses this, right? Never. Never loses this. He could maybe pull some stuff, although they have to be filling Bar Sinister, don't they? Wait, is this just going to be a tie right, though? And then we come down to a tiebreaker. I could definitely see them just playing a big six drop here. This four of a normal, like a four Gigantos, does that ever beat three doubled Magnetos? No, right? I don't think so. But what about from a tiebreaker standpoint? Oh, I actually called it. No, are we going to lose the tiebreaker? No way. These are each, what, 24? That's not enough. We lose the tiebreaker, I think, man. Holy crap. That's wild. Holy crap, dude. I can't believe it. Do we lose? Yeah, we lose the tiebreaker. Dang, dude. Wait, do we? No, wait, hold up. No, what? how close is it, dude? We're down by 19. And we won by 17. No, dude, no. Oh, man. Was there any way to get like, nah, I don't, I don't know, man. I don't think so. What a crazy game. The vision to match our visions is crazy. I actually call Giganto. I cannot believe like a normal sized six drop, you know, like 12 power or whatever would have been fine. Because I would have lost eight. We would have won the tiebreaker. What a crazy game, dude. That's funny. Okay, Nightcrawler early. Not not the best. Not our favorite. Hope. Uh, we'll probably save Nightcrawler just in case we need a Hope activator. That's fine. I mean, we prefer Kitty, of course, or Shuri, but just in case. Um, This is going to be hard to find time to play. Let's just go ahead and put it into Vault, to be honest, just to get some power down. Just It's just hard to get a window for it otherwise. Sinister London with hope is really cool. Okay, just just get some bodies moving. Shuri would be our next best play, right? Then we could go Magneto London, uh, and then Taskmaster. Shuri off the top here would be dreamy, dude. Dreamy. Luke Cage. Okay, maybe a high Evo deck. Oh, oh my God. Dreams actually do come true. Now Magneto's gonna move the Luke Cage around. We don't know where though, because this. Well, maybe he may move mid. Uh, but theoretically, right? But I mean, this is like the dream line from a power output standpoint. I mean, you know, if they don't have Shang-Chi type answers, they're going to be in trouble. Uh, so Magneto mid could actually kind of lock them up mid here if it rolls to mid. Of course, I don't think we put it left. We want two of these. We want ultimately we just want power output, right? It's going to be the key thing to get here. My baby is making some sounds in the background. I don't know if you guys can hear that or not. She should be good to go. I don't know what's up. She's not happy, though. You should be chill. You were so chill a second ago. What happened? So where does the second Magneto go? Left or... Oh, left. Okay. So they are locked up left, which does give us some data on, like, how the Sinister London's going to roll out. Oh, the Jane in the Bast deck. Crazy. Luke Cage protecting it is nice. Uh, okay. So left looks totally secure. There's no way they're getting... Well, nine off Bishop. I mean, I guess there's only six spots. So no, I don't, we don't think that's happening, right? 
Uh, Taskmaster into um, Nico Nightcrawler. Sure, man, that's cool. Monster. I mean, there's no way, right? There's just 24 and 24. It's just no way. The Magneto is just so insanely big, and, and the disruption it creates as well is just so crazy. Okay, Need of a Leer. It's actually pretty interesting for Taskmaster sometimes, right? All that bonus power getting copied can be nice. Uh, we love hope. If we if we go for hope, we don't really have time for Hulkbuster, right? So it's actually fine to put in here, though. You got hope, Shuri, um, big guy. Might decide on the vision instead for flexibility, though. Just depends. So just getting down eight power here is totally chill. We're not going to have a lot of curve flexibility this game. It looks like, dude, this Hawkeye is so sick. <laughs> the rainbow crackle ink old man Hawkeye is awesome. That's very cool. Oh, Atalan. Oh, no. I need Shuri in a six drop back. Oh, man. This was kind of the perfect hand, to be honest. I mean, Magneto is better than Orca in this case, but otherwise, perfect hand. Oh, boy. It got a lot worse. Oh, Shuri's back, though. No, Shuri Magneto's great. Never mind. Perfect hand. <laughs> We're back. Now we just need Taskmaster, which we didn't have anyway, so that's fine. Totally fine. Without Taskmaster, I mean, Orca could be good. Like, just dump an Orca right. Rogue. Okay, that actually does technically contest an Orca. We're going to be pulling this Iron Lad in. I don't know if that's good news or bad news. It's probably okay with a 24 power Magneto, but we're definitely a bit exposed to certain things. Um, so Taskmaster is the ultimate giga draw here. If we don't get a Taskmaster, I don't know if we get there without, I mean, maybe Orca, like we said, Orca's decent. Um, oh, late Pixie, but that also means they're full left. So we just kind of win left here, I think. Like they can add power via Thor, but I don't think it's nearly enough, right? Aren't we just huge? Yeah, we're just giga big. We're up by 17, so that's gonna be fine. Yeah, see, Angela is probably our worst role. I wonder if we do something like this. Oh, well, not this order. Um, just to contest both, right? It's a little shaky because you could imagine the opponent. You know, maybe maybe we actually stack harder here and just throw a flyer for one point here just to contest, but we really try to win mid since they're ahead mid, and that's probably where they're... Victory. I don't know, right? It's just it, this is not a bad turn, by the way. We got to fill quite a bit of power here. I mean, what was this going to be? Four, six, and uh, four is ten. Yeah, we're going to go to twenty plus the little flyer kitty to contest. Right? I like that turn. Taskmaster would have been you know twenty nine or something, whatever it was. Ooh, Sanctum Vision is pretty cool. It's one of those where you don't really need the Shuri for it necessarily, though. Sometimes Vision just does it on his own. So curve-wise, could create some little hiccups here. Uh, this is a really good uh, Magneto Taskmaster line, too, if we want to try that instead. Uh, if we get Taskmaster, just 24 and 24 is pretty nasty. It doesn't really play to Sanctum when we do have an otherwise Sanctum advantage, though. So some some downside risk there for sure. Kitty uh, a little late, I think, right? You want to kind of hit that kitty early, get it up to four or five to make it really worth it. Can still, of course, play it on turn six with Taskmaster or whatever, but. Oh, this reads like a bot, huh? I think we don't lose against the bot here. Watch them be doing some super sick, cool uh, on reveal thing and I do lose to the bot. Uh oh, whoopsie. Um. Oh, Taskmaster. Okay. I was going to say, like, I'm actually a little nervous here that maybe we need something because, like, Ultron could win could win left pretty easily. But I think um, with, with Taskmaster, we're totally fine. Just get big. <sighs> pretty good Ironheart, man. Both of these conditional threes, though, hurt you a lot from a curve if you don't hit ones, man. Brutal. Um, yeah, this is like a crazy power dump, honestly, on turn six. So nuts. The big Shuri here is so nice. Yeah, there's an Ultron we talked about.
It's a big turn, man. Don't get me wrong. It's it sucks to have 16 there playing into an empty spot and get doubled. That's brutal. That hurts. Okay, we love Angela early. Xandar is pretty good to start building out some uh, hope lanes and Angela lanes and so on. Angela's felt like okay in this deck. I don't think she felt great though, to be honest. Um, Angela here. I mean, in theory, we often only have like kind of three big cards, but I'm gonna I'm gonna just throw her over there with since you're London, things get kind of wacky. We might just want bigger, better plays. Might want space for hope into Shuri into big thing or whatever. So we're gonna be more careful. Fortunately, we're just hitting the absolute garbage lines. I, there's something to Orca Taskmaster, maybe, by the way. Uh, unfortunately, I think the Taskmaster, if you put it right on the... Oh, Sinister Lending getting transformed out. Okay. Well, that makes Vision look a lot more interesting. Kingpin, scary, though. Still need to play, man. Nothing to do on four at all. Are you serious? Uh, I mean, I guess the City Nightcrawler is one way to cover mid, potentially. Craven getting buffed as I move in, though, is kind of nasty, isn't it? Do we ever just trust, like, Orca right this game? I don't know. <laughs> I mean, Vision and Nightcrawler moving would currently win mid, you know? It, you know, they're basically both minus two, so Nightcrawler's three, and... Oh, this could be a Craven hit, but we don't really mind that. Kingpin would be worse, because I could just move the vision back. Like, we don't really care. Um, are we worried at all about Heimdall? I don't think so, right? It doesn't really feel like a Heimdall kind of package to me. I think we just move vision back and play an Orca and call it a day. Magneto seems too risky for a deck that prioritizes move. I don't know. Polaris. Uh-oh. That makes us a lot smaller left. I think they might have accounted for that. Uh, Assemble. No, they didn't. We're still big enough. Okay, cool. Nice. Yeah, Angela Forge could be a good start in Hollow. We may not want to commit that hard. Oh, zero. Whoa, okay. Oh, Nexus. Um, Nexus, Angela. I mean, in theory, she's one of the bigger cards we can hit here. It kind of depends, though. Like, do we, you know, hit a good Shuri stack? Do we get hope on curve? Really hope Shuri would be the, the dream. Oh, Ebony Maw, Silence and Nexus is pretty cool. I still think Ebony Maw, one of the, like, most underrated cards we have. Uh, yeah, let's, uh... Let's try to stack here a little bit still, you know. Um... The order mentioned does let me cheat into like Magneto sooner and Magneto could actually really move the opponent's stuff around. Although this definitely looks like a Shuri deck. It would be nice if we could hit our own Shuri, huh? Wouldn't that be cool, man? Ooh, this could be spicy too, though. What if we just replace the Nexus? Do we have a better chance to win? uh we're ramping into magneto i mean i'm definitely scared of shuri so maybe maybe we like this a little better it's still kind of shaky though to be honest i don't know it's just i know if they do have shuri we're in trouble yeah so see this this basically splits out their power a little bit better than nexus i mean it's still gonna be hard because we don't have our own uh like taskmaster combo stuff to match without our shuri you know Pet Mansion. Does that still roll into this next turn or not? I have no idea. It does not. Um, so like we said, we can move Shuri. Probably doesn't really change anything though, is the is the is the issue, right? I mean Orca here you don't actually anticipate beating a taskmaster or anything. Yeah, I just don't really see it. I don't know. Just doesn't look doesn't look like it's gonna be in the cards. Oh, this actually locks them up right. I did not expect Typhoid Mary. Interesting. Suddenly, Lizard debuff comes in to calculate too, huh? Um, wow, now this is a lot more intriguing. Opponent does not have a Nord Dimension card either, right? Oh, I played the Jin last, not Magneto. That's actually probably a bit of a mistake. So uh, this goes negative four, so they're kind of at like 22 here. So 
I basically need five power right, which I guess has to be vision in that case, huh? Can the opponent play enough to beat both of these? Yeah. Taskmaster plus something. Um, they do have zero and Ebony Maul gone though, so their Taskmaster might not be all that enabled. I think I like this a little bit better, maybe. This beats a bigger range of things left. I don't know. I mean, the one drop shouldn't be like it's usually Ebony Maw is the only big one drop. Zero Ebony Maw are the most common. So if they play a Taskmaster or whatever big five, I don't know how they win, right? They can't win both. We're ahead enough, they can't win both. Yeah, Mindscape, I mean, we definitely want to turn off. Where is my kitty at, man? I can't find any early kitties today, dude. Missing it. Oh, kitty pride one time, dude. Ah, uh, you love Hulkbuster here. It's so good later. I, but I I think Mindscape's too important to turn off. I, I also love like Magneto and stuff. Hulkbuster can basically double up your Shuri's lab later, but I just need to take the chance to turn off Mindscape. Like I could play a Nightcrawler now and Hulkbuster later too, but oh, interesting. I wonder if that messes with the opponent's plans at all. Is it like a Zabu or something, you know? Oh, brutally bad draws. Man, I have so much early game in this deck to just miss it constantly. Hope for them is scary. I'm losing hope. Oh, Shuri, but you're too late, Shuri. You're not going to have time to be good enough, even with Taskmaster. Ah, oh, man. Maybe I should have kept that Hulkbuster, huh? Mobius. They're getting some freebies here because Bifrost is going to move these out anyway. Um... Oh, this doesn't move, huh? Oh, interesting. I don't even know what this is then. That's really hard to guess. Um, Shuri. This actually makes Taskmaster pretty dang cool. Honestly. Um, Magneto is big, though. This, like, basically accelerates the kitty pride by a turn it's still not gonna be enough though is it like what, what is this going to 12 it'll be 24 with the taskmaster next turn i mean that is pretty good but problem is i gotta play oh actually 26 yeah problem is right you gotta play this into into lab to make it worth it oh they're not confident though i mean i guess 26 does mean they have to play power there which means maybe they're not playing much power elsewhere 